Matthew Stuckey here from Verity Baptist Church Manila and Verity Baptist Church Pampanga with a quick missionary update. And I didn't get around to one last week, so I'll give you kind of a two-week update. And so we had 20 souls saved the last two weeks, um, and so we're doing the best we can to try to get people saved. Um, obviously, things are difficult here um, at the moment. Um, the quarantining is uh, pretty strict here, and so most people at the moment are... are under really strict quarantine where they're not really able to get out of their house too much. Um, we're giving quarantine passes. Uh, our family, uh, we have one uh, quarantine pass, so it's only for me, it's not for my wife. But in some areas with a quarantine pass, you're only allowed out two days a week for um, a shortened time block, like four hours to do essentials and things like that. So they've decided today to change the extended quarantine to a modified extended quarantine starting on the 15th, which um, we were hoping it was gonna go to general quarantine which would have uh, released things and helped the process speed up quicker to opening up everything in society, all jobs and everything like that. But uh, with this, it's going to be a bit of a slower process. And uh, they had, um, I think, 60% of the mayors, 10 out of 17, voted on that. And so I'm not sure if they went with majority rule or if they were just getting a general idea what the mayors in Metro Manila thought. But 10 out of 17 voted to not put it to general quarantine. So we're still going to be under extended quarantine. And uh, then they've got a uh, at least a rough outline idea of um, opening up everything everything in society. It's like a three-month outline, and um, for churches to be able to have services to open up, that's going to be, looks like in August, um, because gatherings are allowed at that point, but um, I don't think large gatherings. I'm still not sure on the official rules. I still have to learn about that. That just kind of happened today, so I'm trying to get an exact understanding of what the guidelines are. And so obviously we're praying about that God will heal our land and we'll, we're asking for forgiveness and that we will be able to open everything back up and uh, the virus will pass and everyone will be able to get back to work and things like that. But, um, you know, obviously it's not in our hands right now, so we're just kind of waiting. So just definitely pray for us about that. Um, it's a pretty difficult situation. And, you know, most of my friends on uh, Facebook are from the U.S. And I know a lot of people in the U.S. are really getting antsy and uh, frustrated by the government having tight controls, but um, it's definitely tighter here. Um, but I, I honestly can't really complain too much because it's not really bad where I am, um, where we live in Pasig. It's, it's uh, not too bad with my quarantine pass and things like that. So, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's what we're dealing with right now, and we're praying that that will pass sooner rather than later. We'll see. But anyways, the last couple of weeks, um, I preached um, from two weeks ago on Psalms 22, and I also preached um, on the end of our worldliness series on the pride of life. And on Revelation, I've gone through um, the, the, the Great Tribulation as well as the 144,000 was a sermon on Wednesday. It was a long sermon just on the 144,000. And then this past Sunday, I preached one sermon on Mother's Day, Sarah versus Lot's wife. The comparison from Genesis 18 to 19, which is very interesting. But then I preached a sermon, More Hardcore Does Not Equal More Godly. Um, I'd recommend you check that out. I'm going to make a video clip of it this week. But I showed kind of Paul the Apostle being more hardcore was actually a mistake in the book of Acts. And he should have listened to the disciples through the Holy Spirit as well as Agabus who told him not to go um, on the day of Pentecost where he wanted to go. And, um, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and Paul the Apostle is a better man of God than, you know, I'm going to ever be, I'm sure. But, you know, he wasn't perfect either. And we can look at his life and see that he made a mistake and um, sometimes we can be a little bit too zealous and you got to use wisdom and you got to figure out what battles to fight and so anyways i'd recommend you check that sermon out if you're, you're you're interested and obviously we're independent fundamental baptists and we're the new ifb so we're hardcore we preach hard but we need a proper balance on things as well but um anyways uh things are tough here it's definitely a tough restriction but you know it's not all doom and gloom we've we've started a um we've done a lot of things we've through via zoom and we're going to try google hangouts this week to do prayer meetings sing hymns and things like that during this time period obviously we ask you to pray for us um but one exciting thing we've been doing is we've been doing our romans memorization challenge and we have challenge a and b and challenge a is to memorize two verses um per week and in 16 weeks, you can memorize chapter one. Challenge B is to memorize the entire book, so one chapter per week. And so many of us are keeping up with that one chapter per week, and many others are attempting to do it, but obviously it's a lot of memorization, and uh, not everyone's going to be um, have the time or the capacity to be able to do that. I've loved it, though. I've been learning a ton about the Bible, and it's been such a great success. Everyone's loved it so much. Um, we're, I mean, everyone's just talking about the Bible and things like that that, 
you know, once we finish preaching through Revelation and once we finish um, the Romans Memorization Challenge, I'm planning just perpetually that whatever I'm memorizing, whatever I'm preaching on Wednesdays, you know, chapter by chapter, we're going to have a Bible Memorization Challenge to try to, um, and the tougher challenge will be one chapter per week. Now, obviously, there's some chapters in the Bible that are very long, but generally with long chapters, I break it into multiple sermons because there's usually multiple ideas being expressed in the chapter. So I'm really not one to uh, preach 75 verses in one sermon. I'd probably break that up. And we would do that with a memorization challenge. You know, we'd break it up into two or three weeks or something. And I try to line it up with the preaching. And so obviously there's a lot still to consider. I'm going to have to be outlining the various books of the Bible that I'm studying and reading and to prepare whatever we decide to memorize after the book of Romans. We have a lot of time left before we do that, but it's been a great success. Everyone's been learning about the Bible, talking about the Bible, and it's been great. It's been exciting. And I think memorizing the Bible is the best way to study, and it's been motivating to me to have people to um, uh, uh, help motivate me and also for other people. We're just motivating each other, so that's great. And so it's not all doom and gloom. We're studying the Bible. We're um, singing hymns together, doing our prayer time and stuff like that. But we're, we're excited and looking forward to being able to go back to our normal schedule, both in Manila and Pampanga. But it could be a little while. Um, it could be till August. You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, we thought it would probably be over by now, but they're being very careful. And um, a lot of the uh, medical people have um, talked about the potential of a major outbreak and so hopefully with the warm weather it can just completely you know kind of kill it off because obviously it's pretty hot out here it's getting pretty especially this time of year and that seems to be a big factor that will help get rid of the coronavirus and maybe with a lot less cases they would um, loosen those restrictions but we're definitely praying about it as a church and just doing the best we can so anyways just uh, continue to pray for us and pray for our ministry and 